On one side of a militarized border, the latest casualty of the Eurozone death crisis. On the other, Turkish occupied northern Cyprus. They share one island, divided since 1974 by ethnicity, currency, geopolitics and mistrust. But according to the finance minister of the self-declared northern state, they feel each other's pain, even if it is with a touch of satisfaction. It's very unfair that the, Turk, the Greek Cypriots on the whole should be paying such a high price. Because as an economist, when I look at what's going on, it's quite incredible, it's quite horrible. And uh, these uh, devastating effects will be going on for years. He believes there is now a new opportunity for peace. The potential uh, prosperity for all Cypriots, if you do have a lasting peace, is too great. That isn't a view shared by many in the more prosperous South. The obstacles to peace and reunification are immense and emotional. There's land ownership, refugees, the rights to large deposits of gas and oil, the wrongs of the past. You can see the Turkish Cypriot flag over there from the presidential palace in Nicosia. And looking back from the South, people can see homes and businesses here that once belonged to them. Business in northern Cyprus has struggled since the global financial crash of 2007. And while there are benefits from tourism and Turkey's economic boom, the view from the well-known Dome Hotel in Kyrenia is that the banking crisis in the south is bad news for the north. It is saddening because we know that the crisis in the south will pass to us in the north and deepen the crisis that we already have. There is a feeling here that with Turkish Cypriots drowned out by the influence of Ankara and Greek Cyprus about to sink into a sea of austerity, perhaps the island's two halves are better served united than apart. Perhaps, but not likely. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, in Turkish-occupied northern Cyprus.